Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in our Living Football series brought to you from the home of FIFA here in Zurich, Switzerland. Today you will meet a very special friend of this program. He made 67 appearances for Switzerland during a successful career and four years later FIFA is welcoming Jelson Fernandez as Director Member Associations Africa. We will show you how Costa Rica are preparing for the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup and Living Football went to Leeds for the Joint Technical FIFA and UEFA workshop. Living Football Episode 10 in the FIFA World Cup Year 2022. Let's go! Hebe is one of the most popular players in the German Bundesliga and his greatest club success was winning the German Cup in 2018 with Eintracht Frankfurt. Jelson Fernandes played in almost every top European league and for Switzerland he scored the only goal in Switzerland's 1-0 victory over Spain at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. But he never forgot his roots. Jelson Fernandes was born in 1986 in Praia, the capital of the Cape Verde Islands. And that is exactly where his first official trip as the new FIFA director for Africa took him. This country is Amara, it represents my roots. I'm born here, I grew up here, then uh, we went with my family to Europe for a better future. Uh, but we are here today to uh, inaugurate the pitches here uh, and also uh, uh, the training uh, center in, uh, in, in Praia, uh, technical center and also where the federation is. Uh, very important for us uh, to be here in Santa Cruz, uh, to have this beautiful stadium. Um, and uh, be able to develop the football everywhere at all. FIFA uh, knows that uh, the Africans are very passionate about football. Football, in fact, is uh, the two sport as we call it in French, le sport roi. Uh, in all the countries that uh, you visit, uh, you cannot go from the airport to the hotel without seeing young girls and young boys playing in the street. So for us, it's not only a fun, uh, continent that provides talent to all the other confederations. We have seen uh, uh, big uh, players all coming from Africa, uh, demonstrating uh, their talent in the biggest club in Europe. And it's natural that also we try to keep those talents at home. And this is also the way we are doing it by uh, enrolling this new uh, talent development program that is run uh, by the famous uh, Arsenal coach Arsene Wenger, who is now the, uh, the, technical, the director of uh, Global Technical Football. And uh, we have seen already that out of the 211 member associations of FIFA, more than half of them have already enrolled for the program. It means that we will be able to detect, but hopefully also retain the African talent scope. Well, this one is the first of a series, as I said, so we will have two additional ones coming soon. Uh, and the idea is that this is the first phase, delivering the stadium. But when you deliver a stadium, when you deliver an artificial pitch, the idea is that the pitch is a long-lasting pitch. This one is certified by FIFA. In order for you to be able to produce football for on a long period of time, you need to maintain it properly. So this is the second priority that we will have in the future. Be sure that this pitch is maintained properly. Then, now that you've got the infrastructure, it will be a discussion with the Federation for us to come with ideas in developing football right now. Because now you have the infrastructure, you need to have children on the pitch, you need to have women on the pitch, you need to have youth that will grow and constitute part of the national team in the future. And this is where we are aiming to go. Believe. Believe in yourself, believe it's possible, yes, yes. Yeah. believe you can make happen. Uh, football is more than, uh, than a sport, you can, uh, there are great values into, into the sport that you can bring with you into normal life, respect, fair play, uh, dedication, passion for what you do, commitment and uh, that's why uh, also these kids, I can, I can see myself in them and uh, when you are born in such island, uh, you have some opportunities and you need to uh, to, to do the best for it. <laughs> Look. <laughs> 
What a busy week. We are happy he's joining us now via video from Praia. Welcome, Jelson. It's a pleasure to have you. And it's so great you're back at FIFA. You remember, probably, we hosted a show already together? Yes, I remember. It was uh, for the birthday of uh, the Rey Pelé. Uh, I enjoyed it uh, doing that session uh, with you. And uh, Jessica, good to see you uh, again. Now you are Director Member Associations Africa and currently in Cape Verde, where you were also born. What other connections do you still have with the island? Well, I'm born here uh, in Cape Verde. I stayed uh, uh, the five first years of my life in the, in the country. Uh, my mom then left for Switzerland to join my father. Uh, immigration story. Um, my roots are here. Uh, I'm African. Uh, my, uh, Education uh, came from an African family. Uh, I'm happy uh, to be back uh, in the continent, but I come two times a year anyway, also during my career. So it's not uh, something I discover uh, and um, I'm happy to be in the continent. Can you tell us about the inauguration events you have overseen in Cape Verde this week? We had some forward project uh, here in, uh, in, uh, in Cape Verde. Uh, we had, uh, uh, three pitches. We had uh, the, 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 the we refurbished the, the technical center and the headquarters of the of the federation. And for for us, it was always planned. Uh, FIFA was always planned to have a, a inauguration here. It was just to tell my team, look, uh, we are lucky uh, to do this job. We have a, a privilege uh, to be uh, at FIFA and to be able. Uh, to change the future of some kids, girls and boys and uh, give an opportunity and uh, give joy to the people watching football, enjoying football. So when you are here, just know something. Uh, so the people were, were, were forced uh, to leave the continent, to go somewhere else. You are lucky now. You decide where you go and how you go. And we can help Africa together. And that's what I wanted to, to share here. Before you joined FIFA, you said, I see it as my obligation to work for Africa and its football. Now you are bringing together all African offices. What is the focus on? My focus is on development. Uh, I mean, development and then we also have to uh, proactively uh, give some activity uh, to, uh, to, the, to the Federation and the infrastructure we built together with the Federation, sometimes with the government. So for me, it's very easy uh, to say, uh, look, this is where we are. This is where we want to go, and this is all we're gonna go. We have some uh, key pillars uh, in the FIFA vision of FIFA president, and we need to follow that step, but also uh, give our best every day, which is which I really mean it uh, by by giving the best every day because we are once again we are lucky, Jessica. You were raised in Switzerland, you played in Switzerland, the UK, France, Italy, Portugal, Germany. What are, from your point of view, the biggest challenges for football in Africa and at the same time the opportunities? Well, let's start positively. Uh, opportunities is the talent you have on the continent. Uh, then we need to have a better organization. Sometimes uh, we need also to have better infrastructures to be able to have more competitions because competitions give experience. Uh, to girls and, uh, and, and boys. So it's, uh, it's all together. In some countries uh, we have problems because to join the other part of the country uh, it's difficult or is expensive uh, due to uh, the financial uh, problems and maybe no flights. Uh, so this is the what kind of issue we have. And then in some countries we are still unstable politically which doesn't help the development of the sport. But this we cannot really influence but we can give joy to the people. Uh, at least. So, um, challenge uh, we have some in the continent, but also a lot of satisfaction. And this uh, country, this federation did an excellent job, for example, here in Cape Verde, not because it's mine, huh? I prefer to say it, but uh, because uh, the president has a vision. And, uh, and I think it's important to have a, a clear strategy uh, in every member association and to be able to, to develop and to follow the, the, the paths of this vision. Since 2016, FIFA has approved 325 forward projects in Africa. What are the most urgent tasks just after COVID? COVID had an impact also uh, into the sponsorship and the income of the, of the Federation. But uh, uh, thanks God and thanks to our president and his vision to help uh, during the pandemic and to help the Federation, FIFA was able to give 
uh, help and support to the to the federation. Now we are out of COVID and uh, you know we have these infrastructures exactly. That's what we did. But now we need to give life to this infrastructure, and, and then we have also we need to maintain this infrastructure for the future. So. And uh, the people that are using this uh, this infrastructure have a responsibility uh, for the rest of uh, of the people coming, uh, really. Uh, but um, you know, we have a continent with power. We have a continent with resources. We have a continent with talent. Uh, it's about putting things together to 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 preserve that talent and to make sure it shine, girls and boys. Jason, I know you love the game. I know you're always so passionate about football, but also about supporting people. What touches you most coming back to the Cape Verde Islands? You can change life. Football changed my life, really. Uh, I've been lucky to, uh, to, uh, to be part of that beautiful game. So, and today I come back here. I left the country, I was five years old. I always dreamed to do a career. Did a career, luckily. Um, come back today here um, with an international federation that has the power, that has the willing to change things, to help improve things. And this is only possible because of football. I mean, this is football made my life, made myself. And I am the true um, example that is possible, first of all, and that with hard work, dedication, patience, it's possible. Definitely. Thank you, Jason. Always a great pleasure talking to you. Jessica, thank you and enjoy the mission. All the best for your new challenge and it's great to have you back at FIFA. Well, and the next FIFA event is looming on the horizon, the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica. The local organizing committee, in conjunction with the FIFA Women's Development Program, have come up with a very special way of preparation. Let's put it this way. Vamos juntas. All about them, young girls in Costa Rica and their passion for football. With just a few days to go until the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica, the anticipation in the South American country is huge, especially among the girls who took part in the Vamos Juntas tour. Seven provinces, seven festivals in Costa Rica. The Vamos Juntas Tour brought together hundreds of female young players from 8 to 13 years of age, from different schools with different backgrounds, but with one goal, to play football and to boost female football participation throughout the country. Here at the Vamos Juntas Tour, young Priscilla Alvarado was right where she wanted to be, together with other football-loving girls they did not only play the game, but also talked about their personal motivation. And Priscilla made herself crystal clear. She is going to dream big. Vamos juntas y nunca rendirnos. Y siempre tener fe que vamos a lograr por lo menos ser alguien en la vida. Por yo quiero ser futbolista portera y quiero por lo menos lograr jugar en el Paris Saint Germain o en Saprissa. Pero yo lo que quiero es cumplir mi sueño de por lo menos jugar en un equipo. It's all about girls empowerment. That was part of the Vamos Juntos Tour message. The dream of becoming a professional footballer is a valid one and attainable if one believes in oneself, no matter what others may say. For Priscilla and the other girls, it was already a dream come true, taking pictures with the trophy. FIFA's women's football campaign, part of the FIFA Women's Development Program, is designed to help associations organize grassroots and small-sided football events to boost the participation of women and girls, in this case adding to the legacy of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica. And by the way, if you ask yourself what does Vamos Juntas mean, it's easy. Let's go together, so Vamos Juntas! The FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup starts August 10th. More information on the tournament is available on FIFA.com and FIFA+. Plus. We are now taking a leap from South America back to Europe. In Leeds, at the heart of England, football experts from all across Europe met for a joint FIFA UEFA Technical Directors Workshop, the first joint FIFA UEFA workshop on technical matters since 2009. 
Yeah, the current support now that FIFA offer for technical leaders through the technical leadership department is to focus on the needs of technical directors as we look to develop them as leaders of the game. Uh, we're looking specifically now at how we offer on-site courses when they join in the role to support them in the role in those early days and to not only explore and help them in the role of being a technical director but also look at the additional services and support from FIFA that will really give them some quick wins in the role to start the development curve. The first time we've actually held a, I guess a workshop in collaboration with UEFA for technical directors since 2009. So it's great to suddenly get the two organisations back together supporting the technical director workforce. And it gives us three days basically to really start to form that relationship with the technical directors in Europe uh, and to look closely at the role. To have a joint uh, cooperation, a cooperation has to be hand in, hand in hand together for the good of the game. So if we started uh, working in isolation, in silos, that would not help the national association. So we need to join forces. The role of the technical director is extremely important. Um, he, is, he, is, he or, her, or she is a crucial person in the development of the game. The technical director has to design and, and also implement and monitor the development programs at the respective national levels and thereby obviously automatically uh, he or she has a massive impact on, on the continental development. Yeah, and I'm an open person and uh, I'm quite, quite with, with pleasure I'm sharing my experience, with pleasure I'm sharing my knowledge and with somebody interesting in, in any kind of um, uh, information I, I'd love to give it. I think, uh, you know, the modern technical director, in my opinion, these days, it's, uh, it's a multifunctional uh, robot, you know, which have to understand in all the aspects, everything which is very difficult to do and even maybe impossible to do for the uh, human being. So uh, you have to be good at something, very good. You have to be expert. The rest, you have to create a team which understands better than you in every single department or some block, you know. I want to go further, I want to improve myself and uh, this is a perfect occasion to see other colleagues, to, to talk about their problems they have, uh, the solutions they have, and so I can grow uh, personally as a technical director. I think that's very, very important. As I said before, um, that uh, helps me uh, growing, and um, I think it's really perfect that FIFA and UEFA are collaborating um, uh, to organize that course, because that, that demonstrates uh, that football is something overall and for the whole world, and it's a global thing. And we have to work together, we have to collaborate um, and that helps uh, to improve uh, football all over the world. It, it's always good to reflect on yourself and okay, what is your role and how much time uh, do, you sp do you really spend on thinking, thinking forward to actually, to, to, okay, how much time are you able to get into the helicopter and to think about already long-term planning. So, and what and long-term planning about the mission, the vision and the goal setting. I think that's really important to be able to pool ideas, um, to be able to reassure each other. That's having strong peer relationships has always been important to me um, in, in previous roles that I've done. And then I guess the icing on the cake last night was to go to Sheffield and, and watch, I thought, a brilliant game of football. Um, so England winning against, uh, against Sweden. Um, you know, the, the technical prowess of the players, um, physical prowess, it, I thought it was fantastic and, and the amount of people that were there. And obviously England came out on top but you know, I, I thought the quality of the game was, was really, really good. And I think for, for colleagues that are here that maybe where the, the women's game um, isn't on the, the boom that that it is here in England. I, you know, we were talking on the coach coming back about you know, how inspirational it was. And with this one, we say goodbye for this episode of Living Football. Looking forward to the next one. Until then, all the best, stay healthy and bye-bye.